Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. After the reviews of the Icons and Speed Champions Formula 1 set, it's now time to move on to Technic, because today I'm going to show you two very different but also similar sets. Here is the 42171 Mercedes AMG F1W14E Performance and the 42165 set, which is exactly the same car but in pullback form. The large box has a more serious 18 plus design with a black background. On the back of the box we see another view, the dimensions of the car, some details and a nice comparison view with the original. The small set shows us the car on the racetrack and we have another perspective on the back with a smaller photo of the real car. Let's open the boxes. Both sets will be released on the 1st of March, 42171 has 1642 pieces, the price is 220 euros or dollars. The smaller one has only 240 parts and the price is 27 euros or dollars. All local prices and pre-order options can be found via the links in the description or in the pinned comment. We get 12 numbered and 2 unnumbered bags in the big box, 4 tires and an envelope with a pretty thick manual and 2 huge sticker sheets. I fear that LEGO will soon start charging us for these by the square meter. We get a cool double shot of the cars in the manual, then some information about the Mercedes AMG F1 team, focusing on their achievements between 2010 and 2022, which is a bit ironic considering we are building the 2023 car, which wasn't as successful. We get more information about the development with photos of the real car, here are our two sets, then there are a few words from the designer, focusing on the new LEGO parts and features. Here is the surprisingly short parts list, Apparently, the variety of parts used in this set is quite low. In the smaller box, there are 4 numbered and 1 unnumbered bags, the instructions, the sticker sheet and 4 tires. As this is a pullback set, there is no additional information in the manual. This is the parts list, now let's start building. We start with the larger car of course. The process begins with the front axle, here is our basic setup. Time to add the shock absorbers. This step was not entirely clear at first glance. You have to attach that pin first and then slide in the axle. The steering rack is in place and also some elements of the pushrod suspension, although it is not yet fully functional. Now the elements are properly attached and we can test the suspension. This is the end of bag 1. This is the base of the hand of God steering. Once we have built this assembly, we join it to the previous one and with a few more parts the steering is complete, every component works. In case you are interested, no, the steering wheel and the front wheels can both be centered. We have a 12 tooth gear on this side, an 8 tooth one here and one above, so the steering wheel will never be properly centered. Interestingly, at least the manual is completely honest this time, it shows that the steering wheel is rotated while the front wheels are centered. Extending the chassis backwards, end of back 2. We start with the construction of the rear suspension, then comes the assembly with the differential. It's time to connect the elements of the suspension. Now we can see how the pull rod suspension works. The wheel hubs have been installed and after some reinforcements, here is our finished rear axle at the end of phase 3. Here's the exhaust with this section and the rear light, then we add more aero elements. We have a new type of panel here which is actually an inverted version of the similarly sized older one. We need a smooth surface to be able to apply stickers. But that doesn't stop us from putting stickers on the other side as well, which is very tedious by the way. Rear ring section completed and at the end of phase 4 we have the whole chassis here. We build a nice V6 engine with transparent engine blocks, it is attached to the drivetrain, secured in place and yes, it works. The rest of the phase involves adding some reinforcements to the sides. Back 6 is mainly about building the floor and adding the Venturi inlets on both sides. In the next phase, we build the side pods using a lot of panel fairings and stickers. Body shaping continues with a few more interesting angles in phase 8. Now it's time to install the seat. I never expected to see the brand of my lawnmower and power tools on an official LEGO set, but here it is. Bag 9 contains the front wing elements and one of the stickers seems to be badly cut here. It has some excess transparent plastic, which is a shame. We can also see that the new, narrower, long panel fairings are being used. Here is the fully assembled front wing. For some reason it doesn't want to go in place easily. Covering the nose section and here is the panel for the hump, which was heavily criticized at the reveal. It doesn't look too bad, but we will see in the end. Hey look, panels without stickers! 
Here are a couple of smaller assemblies that look a bit more exciting than the usual panel building, they hold the front elements together. We add the arrow elements above the wheels and then move on to the area behind the cockpit in the next phase. This is the assembly with the camera pod, the hand of God steering knob and the slightly oversized red ring. Covering the sides of the cockpit, here is the front halo mount, then the rear view mirrors with their supporting cross axles in a specific position as highlighted in the manual. This is the flex axle for the halo. In the last phase, we build the area above the engine. This round 1x1 tile is used to hold the long blade piece in the correct position. A few more parts and then we can attach the engine cover. Last items and the real novelties of the set, the tires and wheel covers. We finally got our slick tires in this size as well and there are no dimensions marked on them, interesting. An obvious comparison is the Tumbler tire, which was also used on the previous F1 car. Size and width seems to be very similar, even if the diameter seems to be a little smaller on closer inspection, about 1-2 mm, the width is, I think, the same. Another big difference, apart from the lack of tread of course, is the rim used. The new set uses a much larger rim, like that of the Peugeot 9x8 or the Porsche 911 RSR. And the other novelty, the wheel cover, looks nice and useful, I think we will be able to use it for the older tires as well. So the tires are installed, then the wheel cover, and in the middle we have a custom printed tile. But yes, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, because we have four identical tires on this set as well. Now they just need to be mounted on the car, and the set is finished. Now for the pullback, it's a much simpler build of course, but it still looks more complex than a Monster Jam pullback for example, it has a few tricks. This is already the second bag, the front wing is of course simpler here, but it still has two layers, nice. A single beam with tiles on the side as a nose cone, fixing the element with further panel fairings, that was bag 2. More tiny panel fairings, then we continue the paneling at the rear, and here is that teal line from the original, represented with a flex axle, that's a cool design choice. We get a smaller rotor blade as the rear fin here, and the flex axle for the halo is similar to the larger model. This compact assembly represents the rear end of the vehicle with the wing, then we add the panel fairings for the side. It's time to assemble the wheels. Once again, we get four identical tires and rims, then the wheel covers, and we are done. So, here are the two finished Formula 1 race cars. The difference in size is obvious, but I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses. The black design doesn't really help to highlight all the details, or maybe it helps to hide the imperfections, but we have a lot of different panels to shape all the aero elements on this car. I think the pullback set also does a good job at this scale. The area around the pullback motor is a bit odd, but there's not much you can do without redesigning the piece entirely. As for the hump on the nose, it's much less distracting in real life than in the photos, and that shape exists on the rear car as well, so I don't think it was a bad move to use these panels here. Now for the features, we have hand of God steering here, which is also connected to the steering wheel, which unfortunately isn't aligned with the wheels. There's a pushrod suspension at the front and pullrod at the rear. There's quite a bit of suspension travel, which is good, at least right out of the box, I'll explain why that's important tomorrow. There's a manual adjustable rear wing and the engine cover can be removed to reveal the V6 engine with transparent engine blocks driven through the rear differential. The engine cover has a strange flex, it's not quite rigid. The pullback set has one feature, the pullback motor. What we can respect in this case is the surprising rigidity of the front wing, it doesn't look that bulky but apparently can take a beating, well done. So folks, that's it for the video today. Tomorrow I will have two more Formula 1 cars to compare and we will talk about the presence and lack of features in these sets, what we get for the price and who the target audience might be. Please let me know what you think of the cars, how you like the building process and what you would like to see in the second part of the video. Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as there will be more exciting LEGO videos coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.